Welcome to your Knowledge Academy Scrum Master Course with me, Simon Blissett. Now I'm going to take you through what Scrum is and how it should be applied correctly in a Scrum environment, along with the roles that make up the Scrum team, but of course focusing on the Scrum Master. An old colleague once said to me, you know Simon, Scrum's a funny one. It seems the easiest approach in the world to apply but takes a lifetime to master. And you know, he was absolutely right. Scrum on the surface appears very straightforward, but there's a lot of potential pitfalls that can lead to fairly major concerns if not applied correctly. And of course, I'll be taking you through all of these in the coming modules. I really hope you enjoy this course. I'm sure you will. So a little bit about the Knowledge Academy. The Knowledge Academy is one of the largest training providers in the world and we offer a wide range of subjects covering projects and program management to IT security and people skills. The list goes on. So why not just check out our website www.thenowledgeacademy.com. Now before we go into all the various modules there is an exam that you can sit at the end of this course. So a little bit about the exam first. It's a 60 minute exam, it's done online and it comprises of 35 questions. The pass mark is 60%. In other words you've got to get 21 correct answers to get your certificate. Crucially this is an open book exam but you're only allowed to take in the TKA scrum handbook with you which has been provided to you in your joining instructions. So when you feel ready to book your exam, as I've already mentioned, it is done online, you can do so by following the details provided in those joining instructions. It is worth mentioning this at this point. The exam questions are going to be based on the TKA Scrum Handbook. The course I'm going to take you through is going to vastly expand upon that handbook and we're going to go into lots of areas which the handbook itself doesn't cover. But just for peace of mind, for the exam, stick to that TKA Scrum handbook. Before we look into Scrum, let's first take a look at its, what some people call its parent, otherwise known as Agile. So what is Agile? Agile is an umbrella term to describe a family of methodologies designed to provide a lean project management. And these methodologies include elements such as lean, we've got DSDM, Dynamic Systems Development Method, we've got things like XP, we've got Kanban, and the list carries on. The agile project methodologies though, are all seen as iterative. These are cyclic patterns working to develop a deliverable and releasing at frequent intervals. Agile is highly adaptive. Agile projects expect to change during their lifetime and as such need to be equipped to be able to do that. A lot of people say an Agile project is indeed experimental, empirical. We're often testing the water to see what's going to be the best route to go forward. Agile prides itself on designing its detail at a level that's required for where we are in the life cycle. It avoids over planning. It concerns itself with working with the detail as late as possible. And this avoiding over planning can lead to a whole area of avoiding complications, which I'm sure some of you have experienced whilst doing your projects themselves. Agile environments are also highly cooperative, where the developers and the business people work together constantly to provide the best solution for the customer. After all, isn't that what we're looking for? To provide something that is actually going to work. So looking into some of these Agile key concepts in more detail, as I've already mentioned, we need to develop in cycles, and these are iterations. And an iteration is a way of moving the concept through to completion. 
So just think it through. Rather than trying to design it all up front and to deliver it all up front, wouldn't it be better to develop it gradually, learning as you go through each cycle and applying what you're learning to the next cycle that you take it through? Another key concept is collaboration. The customer representatives works intimately with the people who will be designing and building your products. They will help the designers to guide and shape the detail on ensuring that what we produce is actually fit for purpose. Now, there's another concept you will also hear a lot of in agile environments, and it's empowerment. We always try to empower at the lowest level possible, giving the people who are working at the very ground level as much authority as is permissible to achieve their results. This has often led to a much quicker turnaround of what we're trying to produce and greater levels of accuracy. Transparency is also absolutely imperative that we understand that. Now, in having a transparent environment, it means that everyone working within the Agile environment understands what, what is happening and the reasons for it. There's another term I really do want you to be aware of, and it's one that we will use regularly throughout this course, and it's retrospectives. When we get to the end of a time block in our agile environments, it could be a time box or a sprint, we will then provide a retrospective. And this is more of an overlook at what we've learned whilst we've been going through that particular sprint or time box, and seeing if there's anything that we can apply into the future sprints to try and help make the agile environment more efficient and more effective. So why don't we use waterfall then? Is waterfall any better than agile? Or should we always stick to agile? There's another term that's going around called wagile, which is a mixture of waterfall and agile based projects. But is there a time and a place for a waterfall project methodology? Of course there is, but waterfalls are, are usually used in environments which are less complicated. And because of that low complexity, it's often really good methodology to use. It's often referred to as big design up front, where the detailed requirements at the start lead to a detailed project plan at the very beginning, which is often followed through, in some cases, completely blindly. We will complete the plan no matter what. Even, dare I say, it's not what the customer really wants. In a rapidly changing environment, such as software development, is this really going to be the best approach? In some cases, it was seen that projects were just taking too long to deliver their applications. And using the waterfall approach, the average time for identifying a business need to delivering a working solution, in some cases can be measured in years. And unfortunately, by the time we actually delivered some of these solutions, they were now actually out of date. Back to the beginning, let's start again. This is where Agile can step in and help. So what are the origins of Agile? Well, what was needed was a new way of running projects which acknowledged that customers were often not technical experts, so could not define exactly what they needed at the start of the project. I'm sure you've all encountered this situation where the customers say, I absolutely have to have this. And you're thinking to yourself, hang on, no, you don't. I know you want it, but you don't necessarily need it. It also acknowledged that the best way for customers to understand what they wanted was to show them models and to give them appreciations of how the project is progressing, and thus to gain feedback and make the necessary changes to ensure that what we are going to ship out to the customer is exactly what they were looking for. It's also become very apparent that traditional projects using traditional approaches tended to waste a lot of resources performing detailed planning up front, which often turned out to be unnecessary. So we needed to find a way, an approach to try and minimize this waste. This led to the birth of something known as the Agile Manifesto. 
Now, the Agile Manifesto is a brief document built on four values and 12 principles for Agile software development. The Agile Manifesto was published first in February 2001 and is the work of 17 software development practitioners from all sorts of different areas who came together and observed the increasing need for an alternative to document-driven and heavyweight software development processes. Now, it is important to note that Agile in itself wasn't born in February 2001. Before this, its creators and many other software development practitioners had long been applying various Agile values and principles. But the Agile Manifesto made certain the ideas that had been floating around the software development world for the last decade or so. Now, the Agile Manifesto comprises these four core values, which I'm going to take you through one at a time. For example, the first core value is people and interactions over processes and tools. And I'll show you these, I'll, I'll highlight these for you, and I'll explain what they are. But before we go into this, it is important that when I talk about people and interactions over processes and tools, what I'm not saying is you can just forget the processes and the tools. And what I am saying is you need to consider both people and interactions over processes and tools. But the key focus is always going to be around your people and your interactions. So let's have a look at each of these four core values, and I'll take you through one at a time and explain how we can use them. So let's take a look at the Agile Manifesto's four core values. Now, the first one I want to take you through, and you can just see it to my side here, is having people and interactions over processes and tools. It's important to understand that no matter how well researched your process and high tech your tools are, it's the team you work with and the way you work together that determines success. Your team and their ability to communicate effectively and efficiently is seen as more valuable than the processes they follow or the tools that they are going to use. Now, this isn't to say that agile philosophies discourage formalized processes or tools. Both can be helpful in providing structure for your team and facilitating interactions. But at the end of the day, they will always come in second. People and interactions has to be seen as the priority. After all, processes and tools are worthless if your team can't communicate. And I'm sure you've been in situations like this on many occasions where you've been presented with plenty of tools, plenty of processes, but no one's actually explained to you how to use them properly. So we don't use them to their full potential. On the other hand, if you put a smart, motivated team up for a task without any processes or tools to manage the project, the chances are they will find a way to get the job done. Now, the second value that we're going to have a look at is working software over comprehensive documentation. Traditional product development processes often required extensive documentation before even a single line of code was written. Now, using the agile philosophy, getting software in the hands of the customer is the highest priority. After all, how are you going to improve your product? If you don't get it out in the wild, so to speak, and then start collecting all this wonderful feedback and real-time data from the people who will be using this product. While this value highlights the importance of shipping software over letting documentation be a bottleneck, it's important to note that documentation in itself is not a bad thing, as long as it is controlled and you don't overdo it. The third value that we're going to look at is customer collaboration over contract negotiation. The Agile philosophy highlights the importance of customer-centric product development practices over product-centric approaches. Now, while contracts will always have their place in the business and in some cases are extremely important, a list of things you're offering your customer is no replacement for actually communicating with them face-to-face to, -face to truly understand what their needs are 
and what challenges we're facing as a team. So under the Agile philosophy, customer collaboration begins early in the development process and happens frequently throughout. This culture of close collaboration with real customers help products and people ensure that what we are developing, what we are designing, what we are delivering actually meets what the customer is after. After all, wouldn't you rather deliver something to your customer of true value add rather than sticking to the contract negotiation? And wouldn't it be better to have a system set up through collaboration which can help to eliminate some of the guesswork that we have to embrace? Now, the final value, core value that we're going to look at is responding to change over following a plan. Now, an important benefit of the Agile methodology is that it encourages frequent reviewing and updating of current plans based on what we're learning. Now, remember, when we're in a project environment, we are constantly going to be bombarded with new information and helping us to understand and identify the challenges that are now faced in this project. After all, the environments that we often operate in are constantly evolving. And the core thing that we need to focus on here is having a document that's going to be able to respond to change. In other words, the Agile methodology will let the product team do a lot of its adjustments based on the priorities that it understands. One of the true core characteristics of what Agile actually represents. Wouldn't it be better to let the people who are working at ground level adapt the plan to ensure that what we deliver is going to be fit for purpose? It just makes strategic sense. Don't allow the teams to be bogged down in outdated plans simply because they've been committed to seeing it through from the beginning. Give them the opportunity to change and make the plan worthwhile.